Hello, hello everyone. My name is Elise. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing so, so good today. We are doing my book haul revisit for the month of October and I'm really excited to go back through this book haul because I was traveling a lot last year in October and therefore visiting a lot of independent bookstores that are not local to me, which is always a good time. And I picked up a ton of books on those travels. Most of these are translated, which is another little bonus. And I happen to know, Insider Scoop, that I did pretty well in this book haul revisit in terms of what I have read and what I have not yet read. So I'm excited about that as well. So we'll go ahead and start getting into it. But right before we do, I'll just remind you that this is mainly to go back over the books for my sake so I can determine which ones I've read and not read, and therefore which ones I definitely still want to get to because obviously I bought them, I want to read the books. And at the end of this video, I will pick one of the unread books to put on my TBR for November. And it's sort of like a must read pick for me in November. Again, just to make sure I'm reading the books that I bought and I'm kind of reminding myself of some of the backlist books on my shelves. So that's a little bit of what this will be. I'm going to try, I say this every time, I'm gonna try and not talk about the synopses of the books that much. I'll put the original book haul down below. So if you want to go more in depth with the synopses, you can go there. But I'm gonna try and talk about like why I picked them up, where I picked them up, and things like that. I say that every time though, and then I never do that. I always talk about what the book is about, so we'll see. But let's go ahead and dive in. So the first book I got was a poetry collection, and it is The Nightgown and Other Poems. And this is by Tasia Kita Eskaya. And this poetry collection is published by Deep Bellum, if I'm remembering correctly. And it is fantastical kind of poems. I picked this one up because I think Deep Bellum was having a sale online and I wanted to pick up some of their poetry. If you don't know, they do a lot of translated literature, but also a lot of poetry. Those are kind of the two biggest categories that they publish. So I picked this one up. It was so, so for me, a little bit too fantastical for my personal taste. I definitely like a more like a narrative driven through line to a poetry collection, but really experimental, really fantastical. If you like that, this could be a great collection for you. So red tick, yay for me. Next one is Family Album by Gabriela Aleman and it's translated by Dick Cluster and Mary Ellen Feiwiger. And this one I also read, so yay. It's a short story collection. And this was actually shortlisted, longlisted, at least longlisted for the inaugural US US of Consciousness Prize. And that's very exciting in and of itself. This one I think is published by City Lights, which is a very small publisher. And yeah, very happy that I read it. There are a couple stories that have really stuck with me from that. But this one, I think I picked up, I was browsing at one of my local bookstores, Third Place Books, the Ravenna location, if you care. And they have a lot of small and independent press literature. And I was kind of browsing through looking for publishers that I knew were indie presses. I can kind of tell by the spine and the logo which ones are. And looking through, saw that this one was by City Lights, pulled it out. The cover is very interesting. Um, and yeah, it kind of sold me. I think it said in the back that it's like gothic tales. I might be making that up, but the blurb definitely sold me. I never heard about it before and very happy that I took a chance on it. It's also very slim. That was family album. Also read, yay. Next one is the Spy Family volume eight. I bought this and read it pretty much immediately. Makes sense why I bought this. I mean, it's series, It's the eighth book in a series that I really enjoy. It's a manga series. The series is just so heartwarming in general. I think a lot of people love it for good reason. And I haven't watched the anime yet, which I know is out there, but I will do that at some point. But another tick, definitely read it. Now we come to the first book that I have not read. And that is this one here. This is Tonio the Infallible by Avelio Rosero, and it's translated by Victor Meadowcroft and Anne McLean, published by New Directions. This one is actually currently on my October TBR, like for the current month that we're in. So 
It's already on a TBR. I'm really hoping I'll be able to get to it, but this might be one of the ones that doesn't make it before the end of the month, we'll see. I think it might come down to me being able to read this one or The Devil of the Provinces. And that one was currently just long listed for the National Book Award in Translated Literature. So I'm feeling more of a pull to it at this moment, but I literally bought this because of the cover. I bought this at my old standby, Queen Anne Book Company. It's my favorite indie that is local to me. And they have a translated literature section that I always browse when I'm in. I think it was in my most recent vlog, a very quick clip of that shelf in general. So I'm always browsing there and this just totally stood out to me. I mean, like, can you believe that cover? And really the first line of the synopsis is what sold it. And it says, so begins Tonya the Infallible, a gripping novel about an intense relationship between a writer and a sociopath. And that's really all I needed to read to be into this. So I really do actively want to get to this. I mean, it is on my TBR this month. Here's to hoping I can actually get to it. So that is this one. Next up, we have what might be my favorite book of the year so far, and that is The Wall by Marlon Haushofer. And this one is translated by Sean Whiteside. And I believe my edition is published by New Directions. I think I'm getting that right. And yeah, this I think might be my favorite book of the year. It, it's tied with another book very closely. So we're gonna have to see how that all shakes out by the time I get to the end of the year. But obviously I adore this novel. It's so freaking good, so freaking good. It is a republished novel. It came out in, I think the 60s and is about a woman who is having to survive in solitude because she has been trapped behind an invisible wall and seems to maybe be the only person left alive and she cannot leave the parcel of land that she's on. So good, so, so good. And I think I might have also bought that at the same time that I got this. Again, the cover of that is stunning. So definitely liked the cover as well. All right, next one we have is Glory. You can tell the ones I haven't read because I'm lifting them up. So Glory by No Violet Bulawayo. Um, and this one's published by Viking. Definitely has gotten a lot of press. So it was nominated for the Booker last year. It was nominated for the Women's Prize this year. So I became interested even before it was nominated for those prizes, um, really because everyone kept saying like, oh, this is a modern retelling of Animal Farm, except it's taking place in Zimbabwe during the coup for Rabu Mugabe. And that is like a very interesting premise alone. Now, I have since heard that a lot of people don't think the comparison to Animal Farm is fair because the only reason people are bringing that up is because it's told from the perspectives of animals, but it's much more realistic than that. So yeah, I'm, I still want to read this. It is just kind of like a chunker. And I've heard that there are some sections that drag and then some sections that are brilliant. Definitely still want to read it. It's not going to go anywhere, but I have been more cautious than I was when I originally got it. This one I actually got at Brattle Books, um, which is a very well-known bookshop in Boston. That's where I picked up this one from. It's a used book that I got there. So yeah, this is Glory and this cover is also brilliant. All right, next we have another one I haven't read. See, we're hitting a string of ones that I have not read. And that is Old Lady Voice. Oh, the bookmark came out from where I got it from. And this I got from Riff Raff Books. And Riff Raff Books is located in Providence, Rhode Island. And while I was traveling on the East Coast last year, I think I went to Maine, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. I think that's all in Rhode Island. We stopped by this bookshop and it was my favorite bookshop of that whole trip that we stopped by all together. I bought multiple books there and they are very much dedicated to small and independent presses. I was so surprised and impressed with their selection. There were so many books that I wanted and I had to limit myself to three because I needed to fit all of these in my suitcase plus all the other books I was buying on that trip. Um, but really phenomenal bookshop. I would highly encourage anyone that lives around there to go there if you don't already. It was fantastic. So got this there. 
And I had been looking for this book. I knew that I wanted to read it. And then when I decided that I wanted to do a publisher taste test video on and other stories, this was one of the ones I wanted to do for it. And I am still planning to do that video. You can maybe tell by how much I'm procrastinating with it, how it's going, because I started that video like two months ago, but I have not started this book. So this one is still like fresh for me to get to. Um, and I do plan on getting to it next month. So spoiler, it's going to be on my <laughs> TBR for next month. That may make it the easy pick for this. Ooh, I'll need to think about that. But yeah, this one, very excited for. I also love this cover. So that's where I got it. Next up, we have Mothers Don't. And this is by Katya Aguirre. It's translated by Katie Whitmore. And it's published by Open Letter. This is another one where I did a little bit of a deep dive on Open Letter as a publisher and was looking through their backlist to see what books I might want to read from them. And there were a lot. So many books that I was interested in buying from them, but this is one of the ones that stood out. This is part of a triptych that the publisher does. So this was actually the inaugural one, but each year they pick one translator who gets to decide three novels or pieces of work that they would like to translate for the year to get published. And then they do that. So Katie Whitmore decided that she wanted to publish Mothers Don't, also Bad Handwriting by Sarah Mesa, and Wolfskin by something Moreno. I can't quite, I can't remember her first name, but those are the three that got published in this triptych. I think they're all translated from the Catalan, and yeah, very interested in this one. I have all three of those, but very interested in this one. Sounds great. And this is also planned for that open letter video. Spoiler on that one, the 2023 release that I've been waiting for to do that video has continually been pushed back in publication this year, which is fine. I get it. Like, I, I understand that that needs to happen. But for my video, <laughs> it's not working out great. So it, it was originally supposed to come out in the summer. It's then got um, pushed back to the end of November. And now it's been pushed back to the end of December. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do that video for this year. So the open letter publisher taste test is going to have to get moved into next year. And we'll reevaluate the books that we're going to read for it because now there will need to be a 2024 release in that video. So that's why I bought this one. Again, stunning cover. I mean, the covers are just on point. That is Mother's Don't. All right. Next up, we have another one that I've read. And this is Not One Day by Ann Greditz. Uh, translated by Emma Ramadan. And this one I have read. It's also one by Deep Vellum that I think I got in the same order. This is one of Deep Vellum's best selling works. And this did not work for me. I did not enjoy this piece. I have since unhauled it, so I don't own it anymore. But it's a nonfiction with an asterisk because that's part of the book. You just read it if you want to know more. Um, but yeah, it's a nonfiction about a woman's kind of like sexual escapades. It's told in like each different partner that she has had some type of intimate relationship with. And you kind of go from there. It was not for me. I didn't like the narrative voice. So it is what it is. But I read it. Next one we have is Panics by Barbara Molinar. This is translated from the French by Emma Ramadan as well, and it's published by the Feminist Press. This one I picked up in Maine. What is the bookstore? Oh, I have it in here. Longfellow Books. And this one is a short story collection all about different like fears or panics. I'm currently reading this. So there's a bookmark in here. Um, it was in my last blog. It's, so I'm currently reading this. It will probably be done by the end of this month. So there we have it. Go me. The other book that I picked up from that same bookstore is Yesterday by Juan Amar. And it's translated by Megan McDowell and published by New Directions. This one is a short little slip of a thing. And again, I was like trying to pick up a lot of translated small press literature on that trip. This one popped out to me because of the cover and the blurb sounded very interesting. So I just grabbed it. 
I have since heard that this is very bizarre, like even more bizarre than the blurb makes it sound. So I've been putting it off a little bit. Also, look how tiny the font is. I mean, it's like so small. And that is also making me not like, why, why would you make it that small? It's too tiny. It's too tiny. And there's no audiobook for this that I can find. And that is the real reason why it's taken this long is like, I'm like, oh my God, it's going to hurt my eyes. Old people problems. But yeah, that is yesterday. Still love the cover though. Okay. Next up, we have Scattered All Over the Earth by Yoko Tawada. And this is translated by Margaret Mitsutani. I did also read this one and this was also a disappointing read for me last year. I felt like it tonally was flat and the story itself, the premise was so intriguing and I think had a lot of potential. It was almost a take on a post-apocalyptic book where um, a woman has sort of lost her language. She's one of the only native people um, from her uh, ethnic group still living and still speaking the language that was native to them. And she starts going on this journey to try and find other native speakers. And even the plot itself in the book I thought was very interesting, but the characters development did not do what I wanted it to do. I felt like they were very one note for what could have been a, a real character arc, a real journey for them, because they are literally going on a journey. But yeah, it just didn't quite synchronize for me, but obviously a very well-loved author. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. And this book, I also picked up Traveling. I want to say I picked this up at Charter Books, which is in Rhode Island. And this was a recommendation from the bookseller there. So thank you to them for that recommendation. Next up, we have The Lost Daughter, another one that I have read. This is by the well-known Elena Ferrante, and it's translated by Anne Goldstein. This one I picked up in Oregon. I think the store was called Big Owl Books, or is it just that there's an owl on the, I'm seeing if I have a bookmark still. Oh, I do, I do. Okay, so, oh, it's um, Big Story. I literally just saw owl because there's an owl on this bookmark. It's called Big Story Bookstore. And yeah, it's in Bend, Oregon. And I picked this up there. Uh, I've been wanting to read a Fronte for a while and I've heard very good things about this one. Obviously now there is also an adaptation, which I have not seen, but that book also wasn't well loved by me. I felt like it didn't all come together for me as far as the narrator goes. Again, I wanted, I wanted it to push more. I wanted it to be darker. I wanted it to be slightly more extreme than what it was, which like, again, it's just personal choice. The author gets to do whatever they want to do. So not the best book for me, but lots of people love that book. Now we have We Do What We Do in the Dark, which is the one where the bookmark was in it. Uh, this has been on multiple TPRs <laughs> since I have bought it. I really do want to read it, but it keeps getting kind of pushed off by other things that are taking higher priority. Um, but this one is by Riverhead Books. It's by Michelle Hart. And it was pretty buzzy last year. Um, a lot of people definitely enjoyed this. And this follows a narrator who is in their first year of college and their mother has recently passed away. I feel like motherhood and like the death of a mother has been very present in some of the the theming and the plots of the books that we have seen being published in the last recent years. And of course, it's a college book, which I actually don't read a lot of. So I'm very much still interested in this. And this has a real possibility of being a choice for me to put on my TBR for next month, just because it's been on so many TBRs before and this would actually make it the priority. So I would definitely get to it. So we shall see on this one. Let me know if you've read this, what your thoughts are. All right, and we have two books left. Another one I haven't read is In Memory of Memory. I also got this at Big Story Bookstore in Oregon. And this one is a little chonker. This one was nominated for the International Booker the year that it got published. I think it might've been 2021. Let's just double check because I 
happen to have the book right in front of me. So this one came out, yeah, 2021. And really, I got this because I love books that are grappling with memory. I think memory is such an interesting, amazing, flawed thing. And I find it really fascinating to read about. So I picked it up really for that reason alone, plus the kind of extra accolade of it being on the International Booker long list. Yeah, that's why I grabbed this one. Have not read it. I'm definitely intimidated by the length. It's another one that has very tiny font. Why are we doing this? Why? Uh, but I want to get to it at some point. So we shall see. But I feel like this is probably not the best thing for me to put on my TBR for next month because it's already pretty stacked. But who knows? And then lastly, we have a book that I have read, and that is Jawbone by Monica Ojeda, and it's translated by Sarah Booker. And this one I read earlier this year. It was definitely a challenging read. This was one of the books that made me kind of work the hardest to kind of sink my teeth in all it was trying to say and all it was trying to do. And it was rewarding for that. Definitely worth the effort that I put into it. I think I restarted it like three separate times. And then on the third time, it just finally clicked and I got it. And this book is so clever, so clever. It is really trying to do a lot with the overlapping and interweaving themes and genuinely really, really enjoyed it. I get why it was nominated for so many prizes last year. It's a great prize book because there is so much to chew on. And it's also kind of like a, a horror novel about young girls and what a horrific time it can be going through puberty as a young woman. So yeah, that was that book. And that is the last book of this book haul revisit. So let's just do some quick tallying here because I'm pretty sure that there were 16 books here total and I read eight and have not read eight. So exactly at 50%, which I think is pretty good for having a 16 book book haul for a month because that is like an obscene amount of books for one month. Uh, so doing pretty good that I've read 50%. And like I, I haven't read eight, but honestly, I'm currently reading this. So this will be done by the end of the month. And then I also have Tonio the Infallible on my TBR for this month. So there's potential that this will also be done by the end of the month. So that's pretty good. Now, in terms of the other books, the ones that aren't already in progress or on my current TBR, I need to pick one to be on my November TBR. So a couple things I'm thinking about. One, November is nonfiction November, among other readathons, but that's the one that I maybe follow along with the most in November. None of these are nonfiction. So we don't really need to worry about that. And these two are plans for other videos. This one is going to have to wait because the video is going to happen next year. So I'm not going to pick that one. This one would be an easy win for me because I'm planning on finishing this video next month. So I need to read it next month. So that is definitely giving some sway. I'm gonna say these two are intimidating me at the moment. So they're gonna be a no at the moment. We're between these three. This one I've put on so many TBRs and haven't done it. So I don't, oh God. Oh God, this is such a hard decision. Please let me know which one you would have picked between the three of these. I might still be swayed to add something to the TBR, but I think I'm going to make the smart choice for myself and say this is the pick for me because I'm going to have to read it anyway. So I'm picking Old Lady Voice as my TBR pick for the month of November and we will see how it goes. As always, please let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!